Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today we're making a cable stitch batwing sweater. Going through Upload's idea, I was initially surprised we haven't tackled one yet, but that soon turned to excitement as I had this new baddie idea waiting to be made. Speaking of waiting, we've got hundreds of modern crochet designs waiting to be made by you, with even more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 750 grams of yarn, and that's 1100 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's padding giveaway by telling us your favorite unusual food pairing. For me, it's got to be mixing salt and vinegar chips on my spaghetti. Tried it once by accident and it's been a thing ever since. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using six stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet, and double treble crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting the sweater started, we're first gonna grab our category four yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're gonna grab our six millimeter hook, and then we are all gonna start by making a chain of 47, no matter what size we're doing. Now that we have our chain, we're going to be doing a half double crochet row, so start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain 2. Now that chain 2 doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain, and from here we're going to put one half double crochet into every chain. So starting with the yarn over, we're going to insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook. So we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook, so what we're going to do from here is yarn over, Pull through all three, and that is our first half double crochet. Let's do this again. Yarn over, insert your hook into that following chain, yarn over, pull through. When we have three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. And from here, put one half double crochet into every chain. So now that we've put one half double crochet into every chain, we're going to be doing one more half double crochet row. So all we're going to do to work our way up to our half double crochet row is do a chain two. Now that doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. We're gonna flip our work and put one half double crochet into every stitch. We made our way all the way down to the end of our row two. Now we're gonna get started on our first cable stitch row or our row three. So to get that started, we're gonna do a chain two. There's one, there's two, and flip our work. Now to get this row started, we're going to start with our dividing stitch, and that's going to be throughout all of our cable stitch rows, and our dividing stitch is always just going to be a front post treble crochet, so let's get that started. Now each of our cable stitch rows is going to be worked into our previous odd number row, so since we're working on row 3, we're going to be inserting our hook into our row 1. So from here, we're going to start with our dividing stitch, so that's going to be a yarn over of 2, and then taking a look at our row 1, we're gonna find the first half double crochet, and that's not counting that chain two. We're gonna bring our hook down, and underneath the body of that half double crochet, and then from here we're going to yarn over and pull through. From here we're going to yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. So all together, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, 
and pull through two. Now that is our first dividing stitch and now we're going to start working on our twists. And that's going to be done with front post treble crochets. So yarn over twice. And to get our twist started we're going to be skipping over that next stitch and then inserting our hook underneath that next stitch, yarn over and pull through. And from here yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And then we're going to put one more front post treble crochet into the following stitch. So yarn over twice, bring our hook underneath that half double crochet, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. Now that we have that, we still have that stitch that we skipped over, so we're going to be putting one front post treble crochet into there. So yarn over twice, bring our hook down underneath that skip stitch, yarn over, pull through. From here we're going to yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. Now all together we should have our dividing stitch, and then a twist. Next we're all going to be doing some alpine stitches. So we're going to start with our half double crochet, and we're going to need to count out four stitches from our previous row. And we're counting out four because we just took up a total of four stitches with the front post treble and the twist that we just did. So taking a look at our previous row, let's count out one, two, three, and four. We're going to be inserting our hook into that fifth stitch with a half double crochet. So yarn over, bring our hook into that fifth stitch, pull through. Should have three loops on our hook, so we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. Next for our alpine stitch, it's going to be a front post double crochet that's going to be worked into our row one as well. So yarn over just once. And we're going to skip over that next stitch that we have into our row one because this half double crochet counts as this stitch. And then underneath the following stitch, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, and pull through. Now to do our front post double crochets for our alpine stitches, once we have three loops on our hook, we're going to pull up nice and tall to get the same height as that half double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And that is our first alpine stitch set. We're actually going to be doing one more before we move on to the next detail portion, so let's do that together. Start with the yarn over. We are going to be skipping one stitch from our previous row because this front post double crochet counts as this stitch. So go ahead and insert your hook into that following stitch with one half double crochet. And then we're going to do another front post double crochet. So yarn over. We are going to skip that next stitch within our row one because this half double crochet counts as this stitch. And then into the next, we're going to yarn over, pull through. Well, we have three loops on our hook, we're going to pull up nice and tall. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And now that we have our alpine stitch section all finished up, we are going to be doing our dividing stitch again, which is always going to be a front post treble crochet. So that is going to be a yarn over of two. Into that next available stitch that we have into our row one, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Now the next detail that we have is going to be another twist, so pretty much the same way that we did the first twist. So starting with a front post treble crochet, we're going to yarn over twice. We're going to skip the following stitch, and then into the stitch right after that, insert our hook with one front post treble crochet, and then into the following stitch, one more front post treble crochet. And now that we have those two front post treble crochets, we're going to put one front post treble crochet into that stitch that we skipped over. So yarn over twice, bring our hook down into that stitch that we skipped to close off this twist. Now right after this twist, we're going to get started with our cable stitch. So to get our cable stitch section started off, we're going to do a set of two front post double treble crochets. So that's going to be a yarn over of three. So there's one, there's two, there's three. We're going to start by skipping the next two available stitches into our row one. So we're going to skip one, skip two, and then into that third stitch, we're going to bring our hook down 
and underneath the body of that stitch. We're going to yarn over and pull through. Should have five loops on our hook, so from here we're going to yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. Just like that. And for this cable stitch section, all of our stitches are going to be worked in sets of two. So we're going to be doing one more front post double treble crochet into the following stitch. So yarn over three times. Into that next stitch, insert your hook. Pull through. Pull through two, 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 and two. Now the next two stitches that we're going to be doing for this cable is going to be another set of two front post double treble crochets into the two stitches that we skipped. So yarn over three times, and then we're going to bring our hook down into that first stitch that we skipped. We're going to yarn over, pull through, pull through two, 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 and then one more into that following stitch that we skipped. So yarn over three times, bring our hook down, pull through, pull through two, 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 and two. Now this is what we should have for our cable. And just to close off our cable, we're going to be doing another set of two front post treble crochets now into the following two stitches. So yarn over twice, insert your hook into that following stitch with one front post treble. And then into that stitch right after that with another front post treble. And now that we're done with this cable stitch, we're going to need to do our dividing stitch, which into the following stitch is going to be a front post treble crochet. So yarn over twice, into that next stitch, insert your hook, with one front post treble, and that is our dividing stitch. Now from here, we have reached the middle, so we're going to be doing our alpine stitches for our middle detail. So all together, what we're going to do is do our half double crochet into the 13th stitch from our previous row. And we're counting out 13 because from our last half double crochet that we did, which is right over here, we have 12 stitches in between and we're going to half double crochet into the next. So all together, let's count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 12. Into that 13th stitch that we have from our previous row, insert with one half double crochet. And then our next stitch is going to be a front post double crochet. So yarn over. Skip that next stitch from our previous row because this half double crochet counts as this stitch. And then into the following, we're going to yarn over, pull through. When we have three loops on our hook, we're going to yank up nice and tall, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now since this is the middle, we're going to have a total of four sets and that's eight stitches combined. So let's get that started. We just did one, two. Let's do our third. We're going to half double crochet but we need to skip that next stitch first because this front post double crochet counts as this stitch. So into the following, insert with one half double, and then do our front post double crochet. Now for our alpine stitches, we have one, two, three, four. We have four more left to do. So yarn over, skip one stitch from our previous row, half double crochet into the following, and then one front post double crochet, so we should have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. We have two more left to do. So yarn over, skip a stitch from our previous row, half double crochet into the following, and then to close off our middle alpine stitch detail, there goes one front post double crochet. And now all together we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight stitches for our middle alpine stitch detail. And right after that last front post double crochet, we're going to need to do our dividing stitch, which is a front post treble crochet. So yarn over twice. Bring our hook down, and underneath that stitch, we're going to yarn over, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. And now from here, we're going to repeat everything that we did on this side of our middle alpine stitch detail, but it's going to be in reverse. So the next thing we're going to do is our cable stitches. So this cable stitch is going to be mirroring the other cable stitch. So right over here, we're going to start with a set of two front post treble crochets. We're going to yarn over twice, into that following stitch, insert your hook with one 
front post treble crochet, and then into the next stitch, another front post treble crochet. And then from here, we're going to be doing a set of two front post double treble crochets, skipping over the next two stitches. So start with a yarn over of three. We're going to skip one, skip two, and then into that following stitch. One front post double treble crochet. And then into the stitch right after that, another front post double treble crochet. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is another set of two front post double treble crochets, but now we're gonna be working in through that window that we made so that we can work into those two skip stitches. So let's start by doing a yarn over of three. We're gonna hang on to our work yarn because it can very easily fall off, and what we're gonna do is pull our work down towards us and try to find those two skip stitches in through that window. So we're gonna pull our work down, and these are my two skip stitches. We're going to insert our hook into that first skip stitch, yarn over, pull through. And from here we're going to yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. Now that's what this should be looking like and we're going to be doing one more into that following stitch. So once more, yarn over three times, bring our work down and find that skip stitch. This is mine right here. Bring our hook down pull through, yarn over, pull through two, 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 and then two. And once we have that, our cable stitch is all finished up. Now right after this cable, we're going to be doing our twist, and our twist is always, always, always going to be the same. So start with a yarn over of two, skip the following stitch, and then into the stitch right after that, put one front post treble crochet, and then one more front post treble crochet into that next stitch. And then to do our twist, we're going to yarn over twice and then bring our hook down into that stitch that we skipped. And this twist is now all finished up. And right after this twist, we do have a dividing stitch to do, so yarn over twice. Bring our hook down into that next stitch, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. And now from here, we're going to be doing our second to last section that we have for this row, which is going to be an alpine stitch section. So what we're going to do is count 12 stitches from our previous row and then half double crochet into the 13th stitch. And we're all gonna do 12 stitches because we have a total of 12 stitches right here from our previous half double crochet. So all together, we're gonna to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Into that thirteenth stitch, let's all do a half double crochet. And then from here, the next stitch that we have in our alpine stitches is gonna be a front post double crochet. So yarn over once, skip the next stitch because this stitch counts as this half double crochet that we just did. And then into the following stitch, one front post double crochet, and then we have two more stitches left to do for this alpine stitch section. So the next stitch is gonna be a half double crochet, so yarn over once, skip that next stitch, and then into the following, insert with one half double crochet. And then we're gonna close off this alpine stitch section with a front post double crochet. And right after this alpine stitch section, we're going to do our twist, and then we will be all done with this row. So yarn over twice, skip that next stitch, and then into the following stitch, we're gonna insert our hook, pull through, pull through two, 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 another front post treble crochet into that following stitch, pull through two, 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 and then one more front post treble crochet into that stitch that we just skipped over, so yarn over twice. Bring our hook underneath, pull through, pull through two, two, two. And now that we have that, we're gonna to need to do our dividing stitch, which into that second to last stitch that we have, we're gonna yarn over twice with a front post treble crochet. And then just to make sure that this row is nice and secure, we're going to yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet, 
and just half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. And that is that. The entirety of our row three is all finished. Now, the next row is going to be a half double crochet row because we need to make our way down to the other side so we can get started on a row five. So just chain two, flip our work, and put one half double crochet into every stitch. All right, so we've just made our way all the way down with our row four, and now we're gonna get started on our row five cable stitch detail. So to get that started, we're gonna do a chain two and flip our work. Now, like I said in our previous clip, each of our cable stitch details is going to be worked into our previous odd numbered row. So this is gonna be worked into our row three. So as an example, we're always going to start off our cable stitch rows with the front post treble crochet. So we're gonna yarn over twice, and then we're gonna bring our hook down into that first treble crochet that we have from our row three. So bring our hook down underneath that front post treble crochet, and we're going to do another front post treble crochet. And that is our dividing stitch all finished up. Now the next detail that we have is our twists. Our twists are always gonna be the same, so just as a refresher, we're gonna yarn over twice. We're gonna skip that next available stitch that we have, and then into that following stitch, we're gonna insert with one front post treble crochet, and then one more into the following treble crochet, and then one more front post treble crochet into the following stitch. Now from here to get our twist, we're gonna put one front post treble crochet into that stitch that we skipped over, so yarn over twice, bring our hook back down, and then do one front post treble crochet. And now that our first twist is all finished up, our next section is going to be our alpine stitch section. Now when it comes to doing our alpine, each of our stitches are going to be staggered. So just as an example, the first stitch that we have from our previous row is a half double crochet. Now we're gonna be doing a front post double crochet into there, and then a half double crochet into the following stitch just so we can get that texture that we want. So we're gonna yarn over, and inserting our hook into that first half double crochet that we have from our previous alpine stitch section, insert, pull through. When we have three loops on our hook, we're still gonna be pulling up nice and tall. We're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two, and now we need to do a half double crochet into our previous row. Now doing our half double crochet, we're gonna insert our hook into the sixth stitch because we took up a total of one, two, three, four, and five stitches doing the front post stitches that we just did. So we're gonna count out one, two, three, four, five, and then into that six is going to be our half double crochet. That's our first set, and we have just one more set left to do. So yarn over, inserting into the half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch section. We're gonna pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two, and then one half double crochet, so skip that next stitch because this front post double crochet counts as a stitch, and then into the following one half double crochet. And now that this alpine stitch section is all finished up, we're gonna need to do our dividing stitch. So to do a front post treble crochet, yarn over twice, into that next stitch, insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. Now that we have that finished up, the next section that we are going to do is our twist again. So that's gonna be done the same way as all the other twists, so yarn over twice. Skip that next stitch, and then into the following stitch, you're gonna insert with one front post treble crochet. Into that next stitch, another front post treble crochet. And then into that one stitch that we skipped, another front post treble crochet forming our twist. Now that our twist is finished up, we have made our way over to our cable stitch. Now to do this cable stitch, it's actually gonna be the same as the second cable that we did from our row three. So just as a refresher, we're gonna start with a set of two front post treble crochets. Yarn over twice, insert your hook into that first stitch, and then one more front post treble crochet into that following stitch. And then we're gonna do a set of two front post double treble crochets, skipping over those next two stitches. So yarn over three times. We're gonna skip one, skip two, and underneath that next stitch, 
There's one front post double treble crochet. And then there is another into that following stitch. Now that we have that, we're going to have to do a set of two front post double treble crochets in through that window that we just made. So yarn over three times. We're going to hang on to our working yarn and we're going to pull our work down, finding those two stitches that we skipped. So here are mine. Here's one. Here's two. Bring our hook underneath that first stitch. Pull through. We're going to yarn over. Pull through two. Yarn over. Pull through two. Two and two just like that and then we have one more left to do so yarn over three times bring our work down and then into that stitch that we skipped one more front post double treble crochet and now that this cable stitch section is all finished up we need to do our dividing stitch so yarn over twice insert your hook with one front post treble crochet and now that we have that, we have made our way all the way down to our middle alpine stitch detail. So like I said, each of our alpine stitch rows is going to be staggered from the previous one. So since we started with a half double crochet from our previous row, we're going to start with a double crochet now. So yarn over, insert your hook underneath the half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch section, yarn over, pull through. I'm going to pull up nice and tall, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then our next stitch from a previous alpine stitch section is a front post double crochet, so we need to do a half double crochet into the stitch on top of that. So what we're going to do is count out 12 stitches from our previous row and then half double crochet into the 13th. Because from our previous half double crochet row to where we ended, we used up a total of 12 stitches. So to count this out together, we're going to count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then into that 13th stitch, insert with one half double crochet. And we're just going to continue to stagger our front post double crochets and half double crochets until we're ready to get started on our cable stitch section again. So yarn over, find the next half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch section, and insert with one front post double crochet. Skip a stitch because this front post double crochet counts as this stitch and then half double crochet into the following stitch. And just to finish off this alpine stitch section, yarn over into the next half double crochet. There is our front post double crochet. Skip a stitch, half double crochet into the next, and then into that half double crochet. One front post double crochet, skip a stitch, and then half double crochet into that next. Now we've made our way down and we're ready to get started on our next cable stitch section. So right after we finish this, we are going to need to do our dividing stitch, so yarn over twice, bring our hook down underneath that next available stitch, and do a front post treble crochet, and then from here we're going to be doing our cable stitch section. Now this cable stitch that we're about to do is going to be a repeat of the first cable that we did from our row 3, so just as a refresher, we're going to start with two front post double treble crochets skipping over those next two stitches. So we're going to skip one skip two, and then into that third stitch, insert with one front post double treble crochet, and then another front post double treble crochet into that following stitch. Now working into those two stitches that we just skipped over, we're going to put one front post double treble crochet into each of those, and then one more front post double treble crochet into that next stitch that we skipped over. Now to close off this cable, we're going to have to do a set of two front post treble crochets into the two following stitches. So yarn over twice, bring our hook down with one front post treble crochet, and then into that following stitch another front post treble crochet. And now that we have that, we are almost done with this row five, we're going to need to do another twist. So yarn over twice, Skip that following stitch, and then into the stitch right after that one. One front post treble crochet. And then into the stitch right after that, another front post treble crochet. And for our twist, one front post treble crochet into that stitch that we skipped over. 
And right after our twist, we're going to do a dividing stitch. All right, and now that we have made our way down to our alpine stitch section, we're gonna start with a front post double crochet because the first stitch that we had for our previous alpine stitch section was a half double crochet. So you're once, inserting your hook underneath the half double crochet from our previous alpine section, we're gonna pull through. Pull up nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two, and then now we're going to do a half double crochet into the 13th stitch from our previous row because from our last half double crochet to where we ended, we used up a total of 12 stitches. So let's all count out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 13. One half double crochet into that 13th stitch. And then we have a front post double crochet to do. So yarn over, bring our hook down into the half double crochet, pull up nice and tall. There's one front post double crochet, yarn over, skip a stitch, and then half double crochet. Now the last section that we have to do is another twist. So yarn over twice. Skip one stitch. Into the stitch right after that, one front post treble crochet. One more front post treble crochet into that following stitch. And then one front post treble crochet into that one stitch that we skipped over. And now that this twist is done, we need to close this row off with our dividing stitch, which is one front post treble crochet, so yarn over. Into the last stitch from our previous cable stitch row, we're gonna do one front post treble crochet. And to close off all of our cable stitch rows, just to make sure that's nice and secure, we're gonna yarn over once. And insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row with one half double crochet. And that is it, our row five is all finished. So let's do a chain two, flip our work, and then half double crochet all the way back down just so I can get started on our row seven wheel for you guys. All right, so we've made our way all the way down with our half double crochet row or our row number six. Now from here, I'm just gonna get started on our row seven with you guys because it's just gonna be a repeat between rows three and six. So to get started on our next cable stitch row, we're gonna do a chain two and flip our work. Now we're always gonna get started with our dividing stitch, which is our front post treble crochet. So yarn over twice, and then we're gonna bring our hook down into the front post treble crochet that we have from our row five or our previous odd numbered row. So insert, pull through, pull through two, two, two. And then it's going to be our twist. So yarn over twice, skip the next stitch, and into the following stitch. Insert with one front post treble crochet, into that next stitch, another front post treble crochet, and then one front post treble crochet into that stitch that we skipped. And then from here, since we are on a row seven, it's going to be a repeat of our row three. So we're gonna start our alpine stitch section with a half double crochet, a front post double crochet, and so on and so forth. And if you guys need timestamps for any of the rows or any section within our cable stitch rows, those will all be linked in the description. Now we're going to keep repeating rows three through six. We just got started on our row three. So placing this first row where we want the bottom of the sweater to be, working our way all the way up until this can reach the base of our neck. And I will meet you guys back right when we're about to get started on a repeat of row three so we can get started on the shoulder portions. All right, so I am back and I now have the length of my front panel that reaches from the bottom of my sweater all the way up to the base of my neck. Now I have a total of 54 rows and this length is just about 20 inches or 51 centimeters and now we're going to get started on the right shoulder portion. So the shoulder portion is going to be pretty simple. All we're going to do is get started on our next row which should be a repeat of row 3. And what we're going to do is our twist, alpine stitch section, twist, our cable, which includes our dividing stitch. And then once when we have this section all finished up, I will meet you guys back. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up our twist, alpine stitch section, twist, cable, that includes the dividing stitch. And now that we're here, we're just going to keep repeating this section until this reaches the top of our shoulder. But right before we get started on the next row, we do need to half double crochet into the previous row to make sure that this is nice and secure. So what we're going to do is from our previous row, 
skip a total of 19 stitches. And it's 19 stitches because we have a total of 19 stitches taken up right here. So let's count that out together. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then into that 20th stitch, we're going to insert with one half double crochet. And then right after that half double crochet, we're going to chain two and flip our work. Put one half double crochet into every stitch. At the end of the row, do a chain two, flip our work, and then do our repeat of row five cable until we reach our half double crochet and repeat. And we're going to keep repeating our rows three through six until this portion reaches the top of our shoulder, making sure that we end on a cable stitch row. And once when it does, do a chain up one and cut, and then I will meet you back to do the other side. All right, I am back and my shoulder portion is all done. I now have a total of 63 rows and my total length is just about 24 inches or 61 centimeters. And now we're just going to get started on the other side. So when it comes to doing our left shoulder portion, we're going to start by counting out 21 stitches from the end. So here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Insert your hook into that 21st stitch. Insert your yarn onto your hook. Pull through and we're going to start with a chain 2. Now that chain 2 doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain and from here we're just going to do our cable, twist, alpine, and twist, making our way all the way down with no funny business. So just to get this started, yarn over twice and then insert into that dividing stitch with one front post treble crochet and continue on with our second half of our repeat of row 3 and then I'll meet you back at the end of this row. Okay, and now that we have made our way down to the end of this row, what we're going to do is do a chain 2, flip our work, and then half double crochet all the way back. And then a row after that is going to be a repeat of our row 5's second cable stitch section. So just go ahead and keep repeating those rows until we have the same amount of rows as this shoulder portion over here. And once when we do, do a chain up of 1 and cut, and then I will meet you back. All right, so we are back, and I have just finished up my left shoulder cable. And from here, we're going to start working on the side panel. So all we're going to do is insert our hook into the corner stitch of the cable stitch section. So now that our hook is into the corner, we're going to be inserting our yarn onto our hook. We're going to pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, we're going to make our way all the way up, just putting one single crochet into every side row. And a quick tip before we get started, we're going to want to make sure that we're not pulling on our single crochets once we're done because otherwise this side panel is going to scrunch up on us a little bit. So we're going to want to use a medium to loose grip. So let's get that started. Start by inserting your hook into that first side row. This is mine right here. I'm going to insert with just one single crochet, just like that. Go ahead and find your next side row, which this is mine right here. I'm going to insert my hook into there with another single crochet. And that's it. Let's do one more set. Now this is my next side row that I have right here. I'm going to insert my hook and insert with one single crochet. And then into my next side row, insert and single crochet. And that's it. Continue to put one single crochet into every side row and I will meet you back. Alright, so we have made our way all the way down with our single crochet row and our next row is going to be a Suzette stitch row, so let's get that started. To get every Suzette stitch row started, we're going to chain one and flip our work. Now our Suzette stitches is going to be one single crochet and one double crochet into the same stitch, so let's get this first one started. Start by inserting your hook into that first stitch with one single crochet and then into that same first stitch with one double crochet. And this is one Suzette stitch set. Now let's do the next one. Right after every set, we are going to be skipping that following stitch because this double crochet counts as a stitch count. And then we're going to do another single crochet and double crochet into the following stitch. So we're going to skip one into that next stitch, one single crochet, and then into that same stitch, one double crochet. 
Now we should have one, two Suzette stitch sets. Let's just do one more and I'll let you guys do the rest of this row on your own. Skip one, into that following stitch, one single, and then into that same stitch, one double. And continue to do our Suzette stitches until we have two stitches left. So I made my way down with my Suzette stitch row and all together we should have one, two stitches left. Now to close off our Suzette stitch row, we're gonna have to do a half double crochet into that last stitch just to keep this nice and blunt. So what we're gonna do is yarn over. We're gonna skip that second to last stitch and then into the last one, insert with a half double crochet, and now this Suzette stitch row is all finished up. Now the next row in our row sequence is going to be a double crochet row. So to start off our double crochet rows, we're gonna chain three and flip our work. Now just to do the first few double crochets together, we're gonna to yarn over, insert our hook into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and that's it. Continue to put one double crochet into every stitch. All right, so I've just made my way all the way up with my double crochet row. Now from here, we're just going to keep repeating our Suzette stitch row and our double crochet row with no increases and no decreases until this is about two inches past the tip of our shoulder, making sure that we do end right after a Suzette stitch row. So what I'm gonna do from here is just do that and I will meet you guys back once I have this shoulder portion all finished up. So I am back and I have just finished my side panel. Now just to let you guys know, from my first single crochet row that I did, I have a total of four rows, and this width is just about one and a half inches or four centimeters, or my total width, including the cable stitch section, is roughly 16 and a half inches or 42 centimeters. And this is just the shoulder portion that I needed, so I did do a chain up of one and cut. Now, all we're gonna do is repeat everything that we did here on the other side, so I'm just gonna talk you guys through it. So we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of the cable stitch section. Next, we're going to put one single crochet into every side row. Our next row is going to be a Suzette stitch row, and then our following row is going to be a double crochet row, all with no increases and no decreases. And just keep repeating those two rows until we have the same amount of rows as our side panel that we just finished together. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. So my second side panel is all finished up. Now the entirety of our front panel is all done, and now we can get started on the back panel. So what we're first going to do is make a chain for the same amount of chains for the same amount of stitches that we have for our last shoulder row right over here. So if you guys have my numbers, I have a total of 63 stitches. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 63. And now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now we're gonna start off with our Suzette stitch row. So into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with a single crochet and a double crochet. So bring our hook down into that chain, insert your hook with one single crochet, and then into that same chain with one double crochet. And that is our first Suzette stitch set, all finished up. Let's just do one more since we should already know how to do this. We're gonna be skipping that next chain, and then into the following, insert with a single crochet, and then also a double crochet. And continue to do our Suzette stitches until we have two chains left. So we've made our way down and we should have two chains left and we're just going to close off this row with a half double crochet just like how we did the front panel. So starting with the yarn over, we're gonna skip that second to last chain and then into that last chain, insert with a half double crochet and now our Suzette stitch row is all finished. Now our next row is going to be a double crochet row. So to get that started, do a chain three and flip our work. And all we're gonna do is put one double crochet into every stitch. Now the back panel is just gonna be a repeat of these two rows. So one Suzette stitch row and one double crochet row with no increases and no decreases. And we're gonna continue these two rows until we have the back panel width that we need. And there is some counting involved, so let's figure that out together. All right, so figuring out the amount of rows that we need to do for our back panel is gonna be pretty simple. So since we all should have the same amount of stitches for our cable stitch section, that's gonna be a total of 33 rows. And we're all doing 33 because that's going to be the same width as this cable stitch section. And then from there, all we're gonna do is do the same amount of side panel rows that we did, minus one because that single crochet row is too small. 
So I have a total of four rows right here. We're going to subtract one because that's single crochet row. So I'm going to add three plus 33 and then add another three for this other side panel. So my three plus 33 plus three is going to be a total of 39 rows. So I'm going to get that done and I will meet you guys back. All right, so I am back and the entirety of my back panel is all finished. Now, once we're done with our back panel, I did do a chain up a wooden cut. And now just to make the seaming for the shoulders a little bit easier, we're gonna be single crocheting across the top of our back panel first. So we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of our back panel, insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every side Suzette stitch row and then two single crochets into every side double crochet row. So let's get that started. Now this first row that we should have right here is a side Suzette stitch row. So we're gonna be inserting with just one single crochet. To get that started, I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop with just one single crochet. Into my next side row, which should be a double crochet row, I'm gonna insert with two single crochets. So there's one, and then into that same side loop, there is two. And that's it, let's just do one more set. My next side row is my side Suzette stitch. So I'm gonna insert my hook into there with one, and then into my side double crochet, there is one, and then there is two. And that's it, continue to do this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into, and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so I've just finished up single crocheting across the top of my back panel. I did do a chain up of one and cut, and now we're gonna do the same thing across the tops of our front panel. We're all gonna start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch, into the top corner stitch of our front panel shoulder. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we should all start by working into our side rows, and this is gonna be the same way that we did the back panel. So we're gonna insert with one single crochet into every side Suzette stitch row, and two single crochet into every side double crochet row, and then just one single crochet into the side single crochet row right over here. So let's just get that started. Now our first side row that we should have right here should be a side Suzette. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop and do just one single crochet. Now my next side row right over here should be a side double crochet. So we're gonna insert our hook into there with two single crochets. So go ahead and insert with one and then into that same side row with a second single crochet. And then from there, this is my next side row, which is a side Suzette. So find that top loop and single crochet once into there. Now, if you guys have more side Suzette and double crochet rows, continue to do that until we reach our side single crochet row right over here. Find that top loop, then insert your hook into there with one single crochet. And now that we've just went into our side single crochet row, we should have some regular stitches to work into across the top of our shoulder. So from here, just put one single crochet into every stitch that we have. When we don't have any more, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything that we just did here on the other side. So our single crochet row across the tops of our front panel shoulders are all finished up, and now we're going to seam our shoulders together. So how that's gonna work is make sure that our front panel is down first, making sure that the cable is faced up towards us, and then we're going to place the back panel on top of our front panel, making sure that the single crochet row that we just did together are both along the top. And then we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of the front panel and also into the corner stitch of the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And all we're gonna do is single crochet our front and back panel together. So let's get that started. Start by inserting your hook into that first available stitch into the front panel, and then insert your hook into that next available stitch into the back panel. And from here, we're going to single crochet them together. And that's it, let's do that again. Into the next stitch into the front panel, into the next stitch into the back panel, and single crochet. And then into the next stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel, and single crochet. And we're gonna keep doing this until we don't have any more stitches left. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything that we just did here on the other side. 
All right, so I am back and we have just finished up seaming our shoulders and now we're going to seam our side. So what we're first gonna do is make sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out, meaning the cable that we have is still faced up and the seam that we have for the shoulder is along the outside because once we flip everything right side out, we want everything to be along the inside. But what we're gonna do from here is insert our stitch marker into any stitch that we want from the top where we want our armhole to be. Now the first thing we have to keep in mind is the total amount of stitches that we have along the front and along the back panel needs to end on an even number. And then also this is going to be a bat wing. So if you guys want a dramatic bat wing, you're, you're gonna insert your stitch marker closer to the bottom. Or if you want one that's a little bit more subtle, you're gonna bring it up closer to the top. Now I have actually inserted my stitch marker into the 34th stitch from the top. And this is just about 12 inches or 30 centimeters. And now what we're gonna do is insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and back panel. And then we're gonna do a single crochet seam making our way all the way to the stitch marker. So inserting your hook into the front and back panel, we're gonna insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, we're gonna insert our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel and then into that first available stitch into the back panel and then single crochet them together, just like that, the same way that we did the shoulders. We are gonna to continue to do this until we reach our stitch marker, do a chain up a one and cut, and then repeat everything that we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our sleeve. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that our work is flipped right side out. Next, we're gonna be inserting our hook into the stitch that's nearest to our side seam we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook and pull through. Once we pull through, we're going to do a chain three. Now that chain three doesn't count as a stitch. We just want the height. And from here, we're going to be doing a double crochet row, just putting one double crochet into every stitch. So just to get the first one done, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch with one double crochet, and that is it. Continue to put one double crochet into every stitch, and I will meet you back at that last stitch. All right, so we've made our way all the way around with our double crochet row, and I just wanted to meet you guys back so I can show you guys how we're going to connect it into that chain three. So since we did a chain three starting off this row, we're gonna count up three chains. So there's one, there's two, there's three. Now into that third chain, we're gonna insert our hook with a slip stitch, and that is how we're going to close off all of our double crochet rows. Now right after our double crochet row, what we're gonna do is a Suzette stitch row. So we're gonna chain one and flip our work. And we do need to flip our work so we can keep up with the same texture that we have for the body. And this Suzette stitch row is gonna be pretty simple. So just insert your hook into that first stitch with one single and one double crochet. Skip a stitch and then one single and one double crochet. Make your way all the way around until we have one stitch left. Now for the sleeve, we aren't gonna close off our Suzette stitch rows with a half double crochet. So I'll meet you back when we have one stitch left to close off our Suzette stitch row. All right, so we have made our way all the way around with our Suzette stitch row. We didn't have any increases or decreases, and we are back when we have just one stitch left. Now that last stitch that we have, as we should all know, counts as this double crochet. So what we're gonna do is just slip stitch into that chain one space that we made when we started off this row. So this is my chain space right here. I'm gonna insert my hook into there with a slip stitch. And now my Suzette stitch row is all closed off. Now from here, every double crochet row is going to start and end with two sets of decrease of two double crochets. So let's get that started. We're gonna start with a chain three and flip our work. Now to do our decrease, we're gonna yarn over and insert your hook into that first stitch. We're gonna yarn over and pull through. Should have three loops on our hook. Insert your hook into that next stitch, yarn over, Pull through, should have four loops on our hook, so what we're gonna do from here is yarn over, pull through the first three loops, should have two loops, yarn over, and pull through two. And now we're gonna do the same thing into the next two stitches. So yarn over, insert your hook into that next stitch, pull through, into that following stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. And now that we have those two decreases, we're gonna be putting one double crochet into every stitch leaving the last four stitches because we're going to close our row off with another set of two decreases.
So we have made our way all the way around with our double crochet row. And all together we should have left one, two, three, four stitches. And from here we're going to do another set of decreases. So to do that we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that fourth to last stitch, pull through. Also insert your hook into that third to last stitch, pull through. Once we have four loops on our hook we're going to yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. And then another decrease of two into the last two stitches. So yarn over, insert your hook into that second to last stitch, pull through, also into that last stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, and pull through two. Now to close off our double crochet row we are going to count up the first three chains that we made when we started off this row. So here is one, there is two, and there is three. Insert your hook into that third chain, and now our double crochet row is all finished up. Now when it comes to doing our Suzette stitch rows there's not going to be any increases or decreases, so just do a chain one, flip our work, and then start doing our Suzette stitches making our way all the way around. Slip stitch into that chain space that we just made together, and then do another double crochet row, and then start with two sets of decrease of two double crochets, and then end with two sets of decreased two double crochets, just like how we did. And we're just going to keep repeating these two rows until this becomes nice and snug along our arm, making sure that we end right after a Suzette stitch row. So I'm going to get mine done, and then I'll meet you guys back to let you guys know just how many rows I end up doing. All right, so I am back with my sleeve. Now I have a total of 24 rows, and the length from our first double crochet row to where I ended is just about 12 inches or 30 centimeters. And all we're going to do from here, since it's already kind of snug around my arm, I'm just going to extend it a little bit more, and then we can do our cuff. So this part's going to be pretty easy, since we all should have ended on a Suzette stitch row. After our slip stitch, all we're going to do is chain three, flip our work, and then just put one double crochet into every stitch. And then right after that, it's going to be a Suzette stitch row with no increases and no decreases. And just keep repeating those two rows until you get the length of the sleeve that we want, and then I'll meet you back so that we can do our cuff. I am back with the total length of my sleeve. Now I have a total of 29 rows, and my length is just about 15 inches or 38 centimeters now. And from here, all I'm going to do is start working on the cuff. So right after we did our slip stitch, we're going to want to start by making a chain the length that we want our cuff to be. And I want mine to be just about 3 inches or 8 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 15. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain 1, and into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So all that's going to be is inserting our hook into that chain, we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on our hook, and a really quick tip when it comes to doing our slip stitches, once when we finish a stitch, Make sure that we're not tugging on our working yarn because otherwise the next row could be really tough to work into because it could be a little tight. So let's do this again. Insert your hook into that next chain. We're going to yarn over, pull through, and move on to the next chain. So insert and pull through. Continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. We've just made our way all the way down with our slip stitches and now we need to connect it into the base. So start by finding that next available stitch into the base, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through everything with a slip stitch to connect this first row. And since we're along the base, in order to work our way up to the next row, slip stitch up that next stitch, flip our work, and now we're going to do more slip stitches, but from here on out they're going to be within the back loops so that we get some nice ribbing. So start by finding the last stitch from our previous row, insert our hook, yarn over, pull through everything. Once more into that next stitches, back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Alright, so now that we've just made our way down with our back loop slip stitches, since we're along the outer edge, just to work our way up to the next row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. I'll meet you back at the base just to connect it once more. We've put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, now we're going to connect it into the base. So start by inserting a hook into that next available stitch into the base, with a slip stitch, and then slip stitch up that next stitch to work our way up to the next row. 
flip our work and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and just keep repeating those two rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base and then I'll meet you back so that we can seam our cuff together. All right, so we are back and I have just made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitch rows. I don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, so now we're gonna seam it. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is make sure that our work is flipped right side out because now we're going to be doing an outside loop slip stitch seam. And all we're gonna do is start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, yarn over and pull through everything. Now let's do our first seam. We're gonna start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. And then find that next available stitch into the back panel and insert only into that back loop. Once we have three loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch, insert your hook in through that front loop, and then into the next stitch into the back panel, insert only in through that back loop. Yarn over, pull through everything, and let's just do one more. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook. Into the next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook. Yarn over, pull through everything, and continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. And when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything that we did here on the other side. I've just finished up doing both of my sleeves, and the next thing that we're gonna do is our collar. So what we're gonna do is flip our work over and start by doing a single crochet along the edge of our collar. Now I'm gonna start by inserting my hook into any one of the stitches that we have along the top of our collar. So I'm gonna start by inserting my hook into any of the stitches that we have along the back. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every stitch until we reach our first side row, and then I will meet you back to show you how we're going to work that. So I've made my way down over to my first side row. And what we're gonna do when it comes to working into our side rows, we're gonna alternate between one to two single crochets into each of those. So let's do the first one. Start by finding our first side row right here. Insert your hook into there with just one single crochet. Find our next side row, which this is mine right here, and then we're gonna insert our hook into there with two. So there is one, and then into that same stitch with two. And we're gonna keep alternating between those two, so let's do the next set. The next side row that I have is right here, and all I'm gonna do is put one single crochet into there, and then find my next side row and insert my hook into there with two. So there's one, and then there's two. And we're just gonna continue to do this, making our way all the way up and around, slip stitch into that chain one space that we made when we started off this row, and then I will meet you back. All right, so our single crochet row is all done. We did slip stitch into that chain space, and now we're gonna make a chain the length that we want our collar to be. Now I want mine to be just about an inch or two centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain of six. And now that we have our chain, we're gonna block off that last chain, and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch, so basically the same exact way that we did our cuff. So just as a refresher, insert your hook into that chain, yarn over, and pull through everything, remembering not to tug too tightly right after we finish each stitch. And put one slip stitch into every stitch. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every stitch, we're gonna need to connect it into the base. So start by finding that first available stitch, insert your hook into there with a slip stitch to close off this first row. And then just to work our way up to the next row, slip stitch up the next stitch and flip your work. Now just like how we did our cuff, we're gonna continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, do a chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. And from there, we're just gonna keep repeating those two rows until we don't have any more stitches left. And then I will meet you back to seam our collar together. So I've made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitch rows, and now we're ready to seam it. This is gonna be the same seam that we did for the cuff, so we're just gonna do the first one together. 
So start by inserting your hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, making sure that our work is still flipped right side out. We're going to pull through. And just to do the first one together, we're going to start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and insert your hook into that front loop. And then find that next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook into that back loop. And then once we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left and then do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our collar is all finished up, the next thing I'm going to work on is the bottom band. So first things first, make sure that our work is slipped right side out and we're going to insert our hook into any one of our bottom rows. And what we're going to do is insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, to a chain up of one to secure. And all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every side Suzette stitch row, and two single crochet into every side double crochet row, while putting one single crochet into every stitch when we reach the bottom of our cable stitch section. So let's just do the first few together. So this is my first side row that I have right here. It is a side Suzette stitch row. If yours is another stitch, that's completely fine. But if yours is a side Suzette stitch like me, insert your hook into that top loop with one single crochet. Now my next side row is a side double crochet row. I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop with two single crochet. And that's it. We're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space, and then I will meet you back. So now that we've made our way all the way around with our single crochet row, we're now going to make a chain the length that we want our bottom band to be. Now I want my bottom band to be just about three inches or eight centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 15. Now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch. So bring your hook down into that chain, yarn over, pull through everything. And from here, just like how we did our collar and our cuff, put one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've made our way all the way down with our slip stitches, we're just going to connect it into the base, but it is going to be done exactly the same way as our collar and our cuff. So start by finding that first available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there to close off this first row, and then our next row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row, so slip stitch up that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, do a chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. I'll meet you guys back once we have repeated those two rows, making our way all the way around, so that we can seam our bottom band together. Alright, so we have just made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows, and now we're going to seam it together. So this is going to be the same outside loop slip stitch seam that we've been doing for the cuff and the collar, so just make sure that our work is still flipped right side out. And we're going to start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of the front panel, making sure we're inserting only in through that front loop. And then insert your hook into the back panel, inserting only in through that back loop. Once we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and that is that. We're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left, and then do a chain up of one and cut. Our bottom band is all seamed up and we are all done. Now the last thing we're going to have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye!